I come in, sir? Yes, please do. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please take your seat. Thank you, sir. Your Ruchi, yes, Ruchi Bindal. Miss Ruchi, I can see that you are basically from Delhi, right? Sir, I'm from Rajasthan. I've okay. done my undergraduation and postgraduation from Delhi, sir. Okay, you've studied in Delhi, and uh, but you mentioned your permanent address is uh, Delhi only. Yes, sir. Because recently my parents and my family have shifted to Delhi, sir. Okay, but um, you claim uh, as your home state as Rajasthan. Yes, sir. And uh, as far as the education goes, that you have studied uh, from Lady Shriram College. and you have done your graduation what was your was it a honors or a ba program sir it wasn't an honors program it's a program it's ba program, BA program sir okay so and your masters is in so it's conflict analysis and peace building this is unusual kind of a masters uh, what do you study in this uh, program so basically we studied the different theories of conflict resolution different ways of peacekeeping peace making peace building and additionally we study one particular international conflict and one national conflict lastly we also study international humanitarian law under this subject sir okay that sounds interesting tell me uh, uh, you have also taken sociology as your uh, optional paper yes, sir. right so uh, this educational background the kind of academics you have done do you believe it will be helpful in bureaucracy because in bureaucracy you are likely to be sitting on files uh, basically doing a routine work uh, do you believe that this background in conflict resolution and um, the kind of studies you did at lsr will help uh, uh, in course of your civil services career sir i believe every step that i have taken in my uh, educational career till now will definitely help me in uh, bureaucracy and in administration sir starting from my 12th in commerce it will play a very big role in account services if i get an account services in administration sir secondly coming to my uh, conflict analysis and peace building sir it will be a very big help in bureaucracy considering every sphere of life has a conflict sir and in bureaucracy also we see there are different conflicts that arises by sitting in the office itself There are other conflicts also, sir, which are on the field. Like a bureaucrat also has to go on the field and analyze the implementation of different schemes. I believe that will also come into the picture while I go into the field and study the scenario, sir. Aruchi, I can see that you had good marks. Why you went off campus? Why? Why you didn't study from a campus college? I'm sorry, sir. I'm unable to follow. Why you question. went to an off-campus college like LSR? So you could have got admission in the campus colleges, like maybe uh, better colleges, and which are not all women colleges. Studying from all women colleges, uh, like uh, who studies from a um, uh, all women college in two thousand nineteen, eighteen, or sixteen? Sir, during my eleventh and senior secondary, also I was in a girls' school, sir, and I do not see. Sir, I believe the LSR, the exposure that LSR has given to me is immense, sir. It, uh, I do not see that it has anything related to the gender, sir. Be it all women or be it men. If a college claims to be a women college and you uh, make a statement that it has nothing to do with gender, it's a conflicting statement. So the learning has nothing to do with uh, gender. I'm sorry, I re-correct it. Do you believe that there's still, uh, if you can't uh, talk about. I can understand about the small uh, cities, but in a metropolitan like Delhi, is there any rationale or relevance of continuing with all women colleges? Shouldn't these colleges be made uh, co-educational colleges so that more exposure, knowing each other, and uh, uh, becoming a better and balanced education is available? Sir, I think it depends on the ideology that an institution follows. If an ideology, if an institution wants to include. co-ed education in their institution there's no harm in it sir but uh, there are certain institutions who want to maintain their sanctity how they were originally formed so i believe we should be given that uh, we should give freedom to such institutions obviously nobody going to gonna snatch that freedom but i want your opinion do you believe boys and girls studying together you st- you said you all studied all through almost uh, till your graduation you were in all women uh, institutions only uh, do you believe that uh, studying in a co-educational institution 
gives a better understanding of each other and a good exposure in comparison to all women uh, janana dibba kind of institutions so it definitely gives another kind of exposure to the person because you get to know the another perspective the male perspective that comes into the picture and you try to analyze the situation from both the perspectives so it gives a wider exposure for sure sir so because uh, when i was in my school in 10th that was a coed institution sir so moving from coed to women was also a task for me so both provide a different exposure to itself sir. fine thank you sir ruchi yes sir can see that you come from rajasthan yes sir from the place called nagor tell me something some historical aspects of nagor sir nagor uh, is a district where firstly i would like to go into the medieval history of nagor sir here in sufism was introduced sir mohammad tarkin was the sufi saint who visited nagor and presently also we have darga of mohammad tarkin here sir coming to the second part post independence sir uh, nagor is the district where for the first time panchayati raj institutions were set up which year sir 1959 hmm and sir uh, now the recent history so the recent history is where nagor is the seventh largest district of rajasthan and it has been progressing immensely in gender indicators sir okay you have a full preparation about nagor i, th- I think so <laughs> tell me who was uh, a sufi saint by the name of hamiduddin nagori i'm sorry sir i am is very know. famous sufi saint sir i'll definitely read up on it sir okay tell me what is the philosophy of sufism so sufism is a strand uh, where which propagates that you need to have an emotional connect with the god through that emotional connect you can have through music or dance they do not believe in a particular particular book which propagates religion but they believe in the emotional connect uh, to the god sir what is the difference between bhakti and sufi movements do you think that these two movements influenced each other so the difference between bhakti movement and sufi movement is the origin first difference is the origin of both the movements sir bhakti movement's origin is particularly said to be in india however the origin of sufism is to be in a uh, sub, sub indian subcontinent per se where so the exact origin is not i am unaware about the exact origin sir so how can you tell this sir uh, there bhakti- has to be some you know authenticity what you say yes sir okay who was the first sufi saint who visited india indian subcontinent in fact i am sorry sir i am unaware okay uh, just now when you are having a conversation with sir you told peace making peace building and peace keeping yes sir what what is the basic difference between three these three concept so peace making peace keeping and peace building these three are in a continuum starting from peace making and ending at peace building so peace making is an agreement where two parties come together and try to find a negotiated settlement here and peace keeping is maintaining that the negotiated settlement is upheld and peace building is a long term process it's a it's a post conflict agenda sir where you try to strengthen the national capacities of a region and promote sustainable development these three concept do you think it can be applied in the case of national issues also like recently there was a riot that took place in northeast what kind of uh, um, i mean which concept could be applied there like peace building peace keeping or peace sir in short term we uh, need to apply peace making and in the medium term we'll resort to peace keeping and in the long term sir we should focus on peace building that's right uh, tell me uh, what is shuttle diplomacy sir shuttle diplomacy is a kind of diplomacy where you start bus services or shuttle services between two countries to ensure there's a uh, cordial relation sir that's can you give any example so one of the examples is the shuttle services that uh, was initiated by pandit sorry sir atal bihari mr atal bihari vajpay where the shuttle uh, services started from india to pakistan sir okay tell me uh, w- what is the basic difference uh, from marxian socialism and leninism and why lenin deviated from the basic ideology of marx and it is lenin was influenced by marx 
that is why we see the development of communism in russia and it got a full expression with the russian revolution in 1917 why lenin deviated from marx and what is the basic difference between marxian socialism and leninism you are a student of sociology yes sir so marxian socialism uh, socialism basically promotes that at the end of the history there will be a stateless and a classless society however lenin differs from marx here and he says that it is not necessary to have a stateless society but we can ensure that the welfare of all the citizens can be ensured and coming to the second part of your question sir lenin differed from marx because the uh, international scenario uh, that lenin was going through was different than marx sir if he hadn't applied for a, a modified version of marxian socialism then the socialism would have faded away in the pure form that the marxist protest propagated sir we see in the case of new economic policy in 1921 that lenin used capitalism and which was called as strategic retreat by lenin so in this case he in fact contradicts with the marxian socialism though he was you can say the ideological disciple of marx sir i'm sorry i'll have to read up on it sir okay thank you ruchi as you have shown your ruchi or interest in rangoli yes ma'am rangoli is a hindi word yes ma'am what is the meaning of this word ma'am it's rang ki holi so you play the holi with rang on the floor ma'am Uh, you use only colors or do you use floral parts also ma'am uh, while making rangolis we use flowers also flowers also what is the significance of the rangolis in the indian festival ma'am um, rangoli has a a very unique uh, significance in indian festivals rangoli is made to ensure that the deity that is uh, entering our home is given a grand welcome when he sees the rangoli at the same time it ensures that the guests who are coming into uh, your home while visiting during festivals they bring in positivity when they see the colors and the flowers this is one and the second is it it is a sign of uh, prosperity and uh, welfare in the uh, home ma'am okay do you think rangoli is a kind of art form in india yes ma'am it is can you name any three other art forms of india yes ma'am मैम बनी ठनी पेंटिंग डांस एंड कैलीग्राफी मैम ओके कैन यू थिंक ऑफ थ्री वेस्ट वेस्ट मटेरियल विच यू कैन यूज टू मेक रंगोली यस मैम मैम इन आर गार्डन वी यूज टू हैव लीव्स दैट वर शेड फ्रॉम दी ट्रीज सो वी यूज टू कलेक्ट दोज लीव्स एंड यूज इट इन आर रंगोली secondly we had the wheat husk at our home so we used to collect the wheat husk and use it in our rangoli and the third is the rice the rotten rice that was there at home we uh, used it in our rangolis ma'am okay can you tell me the uh, few draping style of sarees as you are wearing a beautiful saree apart from this style ma'am i do i particularly do not know the name of the styles but i can uh, relate it you to the describe. region okay Uh, ma'am, there is a Gujarati style of wearing sarees, where the pallu of the saree is uh, not in the back of your shoulder, but in the front of your shoulder. Okay. Then there is Marathi style of saree, where the uh, drapes on the front of your body are tied to your uh, navel, and uh, ma'am, these are the two uh, sarees that are. Okay. Can you name some silk sarees, and just mention the states also? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not. Okay, how silk is obtained, ma'am? Silk is obtained through sericulture, where the uh, silk uh, from the worms is collected and it is uh, made into a thread and then uh, weaved into a sari. So it's an animal source. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me any plant source from which we can obtain silk or the fiber for the silk? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not. Okay. Uh, my question, being a woman, or as you are also a woman, why women are constantly forced that they have to, uh, or their their goal should be marriage, or they have to run a family? Why? Why there? This pressure is there in the, especially in the Indian woman. 
मैम आई बिलीव द स्टीरियो टाइप दैट द वुमेन शुड बी मैरिड दे शुड टेक केयर ऑफ द फैमिली ओनली इट्स द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ वुमेन टू डू सो हैज़ इट्स कल्चरल एंड हिस्टोरिकल रूट्स टू इट बिकॉज आर सोसाइटी हैज बिन अ पेट्रियाल सोसाइटी जनरली सो वी सी दैट द वुमेन आर सब्जिडिस टू द प्राइवेट स्पेयर ऑफ द फैमिली वेयर देयर मेन ड्यूटी इज नर्चर एंड केयर ऑफ द फैमिली एंड चाइल्ड मैम Okay, can you name a woman from your state who has worked for the uh, for the for to save the environment? As you are from Rajasthan, yes. ma'am, I'm unable to recall it right now. But you know something about Amrita Devi? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Who was she? Ma'am, she was a woman from the Bishnoi community who propagated, who protested against the cutting down of KGD trees. and which ultimately led into a chipko movement in rajasthan ma'am chipko movement in rajasthan okay you will call this lady as a revolutionary lady or an environmentalist ma'am i would like to call her an environmentalist revolutionist okay thank you ruchi uh, ruchi uh, have you read today's newspaper yes sir uh, which bank is so much prominently in news today Sir, yes, bank. Why so? Why RBI has put a moratorium on this bank? Sir, so, RBI has said that that yes, bank is deteriorating in its financial health. So we have to supersede the board of yes, bank. Supersede the board of the bank. Yes, sir. Okay. You know, earlier there was PMC Bank and now yes, bank. Why banks after banks are facing such type of crisis? Can you please explain? So there are multiple reasons behind it. one of the reasons is the large npas that the banks are undergoing right now the second is the is a lack of investment in the market the third is so the and there's a twin balance sheet problem right now so the corporates are not able to fulfill their debts to the uh, banks and the fourth is so the poor governance and accountability mechanism in the banks while they give loans to the uh, lend to the lenders okay so what should be the way forward so uh, the way forward should have both short term and long term mechanism to it in short no, short term we need to ensure that the enough capital is infused in the banks to Comment start doing functioning that yes yes sir so accompanied with this we need long term measures sir where we need to improve the uh, governance or on the basis of which the banks work and also main, maintain that the stalled projects are not stalled in the economy and this fast completion of projects so that the money comes back to the banks and reduce the npas that they have sir and what has been the government's response till now sir government has come up with various initiatives uh, like recapitalization of banks sir mergers of different banks bank nationalization uh, so nationalization. bank i'm sorry sir i take it back uh, bank mergers and then they have come up with mission indra dhanush and project sashakt sir so through which banks can uh, become themselves capable of coming out of these situations what uh, you mentioned about project sashakt what this project is meant for sir it is main project sashakt is a five pronged strategy which is given in wherein the banks can deal with their npas themselves if they are below 50 crore of the threshold but if they exceed 50 crore to 500 crore then they have to be given to uh, so can i take 10 seconds yes, to recall please. Yes, sir. So, if uh, the if the NPA's value is around fifty crore, then the banks have to deal with themselves. If it is fifty to five hundred crores, then it will be given to the lead banks to deal with it. And if it is more than five hundred crores to thousand crores, then it will be given to asset management companies to deal with committees. these uh, asset management committees to deal with it. And uh, if they are more than thousand crores, then it will lead to insolvency uh, provisions, sir, under IBC. Under IBC. Okay. Uh... one thing uh, that uh, government has uh, claimed recently that economy has bottomed out do you agree that economy has bottomed out sir i think economy is going through a slow down at because the rate at which gdp is growing has slowed down to a bit sir it is growing at 4.5% right now so it has slowed down sir but government is claiming that now uh, this uh, slow down is over and at gom and the, this uh growth has bottomed out and now will uh, start recovering so do you agree with uh, with this claim of government 
सर वेरियस इंडिकेटर्स आर सजेस्टिंग दैट द इकोनॉमी इज ऑन इट्स पाथ टू इम्प्रूवमेंट सर सम ऑफ द इंडिकेटर्स आर लाइक द सी पी आई कोर इन्फ्लेशन इज अंडर आर लिमिट विच इज अंडर फोर परसेंट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट ग्रोथ येस सर येस नॉट अबाउट इन्फ्लेशन माई क्वेश्चन टू यू इज दैट हैज इकॉनमी बॉटम आउट एज क्लेम बाई द गवर्नमेंट सर आई थिंक द रिसेंट इंडिकेटर्स और द रिसेंट क्वार्टरली इंडिकेटर्स आर येट टू कम सो इट हैज कम 4.7 percent quarter three figures recently two or three days ago. I'm sorry, sir. I haven't read it. I will read it. Okay, thank you. Ruchi. Yes, sir. Uh, Ruchi, you have mentioned that uh, calligraphy is as one of your hobbies. Yes, sir. Suppose you are making any drawing in that, and you make some mistake. Hmm. Would you recreate the same or go for a fresh drawing? Sir, I try to include my mistake in my calligraphy and make a different pattern out of it, sir. What is the most beautiful letter of twenty-six alphabets, according to you? Sir, I think it's R because my name starts with Ruchi, sir. Okay, you are doing some work, some research regarding peacekeeping, peacemaking. What is peace according to you? Sir, peace according to me as an individual, hmm. or sir, uh, as an individual. Sir, as an individual, it is the peace of my mind wherein I ensure that every strand of my mind is satisfied with where I am. Peace is the peace of your mind. What is peace? I am asking. Yes, sir. Sir, it is where every strand of mind is satisfied with the place where I am in, sir. Geographical, which place in India is the most peaceful place according to you? Sir, my home. Your home. Why? Yes, sir. Sir, because we live in a uh, joint family, sir, where I live with my grandfather, and we see how. our family has evolved after uh, decades after decades and how even after a hard day we come back to home and we find peace here also okay strange that you find peace in the joint family nowadays people are uh, looking for peace in nuclear family what do you think is the reason behind that joint family is getting converted into uh, nuclear family so i think there are various reasons one of the reasons is that uh, people have increasingly they have conflicts with each other regarding the way of life that they follow the second is so due to increased economic opportunities people are moving out of their residence and they're going to cities and towns so it eventually leads to nuclear families and so uh, third is because of the differences that are there in the people due to economic reasons as well sir however so we see the different types of joint families are also emerging now like we have extended joint families where even if you move out of your joint family and stay in a city you try to uh, stay in connect with the family that is there in the which you have left behind and you like to go and visit to them so sociology teaches us that that is an extended joint family okay ruchi uh, what are the three problems of rural areas Sir, could you specify me a rural area? Rural or areas of generally? India. Yes, sir. So, majority of our agriculture is in rural areas. So, I think the farm income is reducing. So, that is one of the area. Okay. Second is the condition of women in rural areas, where they are not given much empowerment. And the third is sir, their lack of infrastructure development in rural areas. Okay. What is empowerment? Sir, empowerment is the full ability of a person. to take control of their decisions okay and make right choices make they have the right to make their choices with free will okay uh, ruchi tell me uh, what is the role or uh, uh, what would be the impact of global warming particularly on indian women residing in rural areas so with global warming there will be increasing temperature and increasing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere so in rural areas we see that the areas are generally open they are not as close as they are in urban areas so gases are more prone to reach to the so gases are more prone to reach to the areas where there are clusters like in villages so it might hamper them negatively but there is also positive to so it it is going to hamper everyone re uh, residing in that area i'm just asking particularly about the women of the rural areas so can i take a yeah, second sure. to think yes sir so in rural areas generally women cook with the woods in the uh, in in their chulas and they cook food with chulas 
so with global warming it is going to accentuate their problems like they already are facing okay. a problem what it, it what will else? increase what else so this is that i can think of right now sir what is the your uh, the best quality for which you think that it should be an is officer one best quality of yours so i think compassion compassion is the best quality yes sir okay thank you ruchi so okay ruchi you believe uh, compassion is your best quality yes sir give me three situation where you can kill somebody so i would not be able to kill someone sir so that uh, rules out at least uh, 60% of the services you are applying for if you become a irs officer you uh, raid somebody you are certain that this raid will ensure that this person will commit suicide he will not raid a person sir i think that will be taught to me during my training years sir okay so we'll uh, want to teach you how to kill rather than uh, administer so they would teach me how to kill and when to kill sir i think i cannot learn it right now sir you were born on uh, 20 Thirtieth of October, nineteen ninety-three, as per the Gregorian calendar. How about uh, Indian calendar? What was the date on that? Sir, I'm not aware of. Was there some festival going on? Sorry, sir. Was there some festival going on? Mother tell, must have told you. October yes, is the festive yes. season, actually. Yes, sir. Sir, Navratra was going on when Navratra. I was born. Navratra. Which day of the Navratra? Sir, I don't remember that. So. Let's assume it was Sashti. If it was a Shrasti, which day is Shrasti in the Navratra? Why is it celebrated? Chhati agar thi, to kya Shish Shrasti ko kya hota hai? Sir, I'm sorry, I'm unaware okay, about it. Okay, start from the first Navratra. Take it. Take me to the ninth Navratra. Sir, I'll have to read up on Navratra, sir. I. I'm you know unaware. nothing about Navratra. Why do we celebrate uh, Navratra? I mean, especially the. Uh, kanya pujan don't you think this uh, is basically what we are, what we are celebrating is uh, uh, the virginity we actually uh, uh, are uh, uh, worshiping the uh, uh, chastity isn't it so that is one aspect of it however we have already uh, always through our culture attached importance to the women of the family and especially kanyas sir, uh, who haven't achieved their menstruation age till that's now that's what i'm saying yes, why sir. what's the problem with this uh, achieving menstruation why women become not worshipable once they achieve uh, achieve menstruation sir it is purely cultural based where the culture believes that the women are... you very well know that it leads to sabri mala thing yes sir sir so you still see no problem in it no sir i definitely see a problem here because the peop the women who achieve a menstruation age they are considered so called impure so that is a form of untouchability that is propagated sir so i definitely see it as a problem sir okay last one from me you uh, like calligraphy there is a indian tradition of calligraphy called kushkat do you know anything about it no sir i'm no. not aware thank you okay nice talking to you you can leave now same here sir thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir Take your seat. Thank you. Ruchi, is it your first interview there? Here. There. Yes, sir. Okay. Kya ho raha tha har bar? Why were you not reaching to that uh, stage? Mains me kam aa raha tha? Nahi sir, prelims nahi clear ho raha tha. Aisa kyun? So for the first two attempts, uh, I give it as a trial basis, sir. Ki let us see kya hai exam because I had no clue about it. I got to know about it in my college. सो आई ट्राइड फर्स्ट एक महीने की प्रेपरेशन से देन सेकेंड आई ट्राइड इट दो महीने की प्रेपरेशन से एंड थर्ड वन आई गिव इट विद फुल कॉन्फिडेंस एंड फुल प्रेपरेशन बट आई कुड नॉट क्लियर इन द फोर्थ वन आई गिव इट आई क्लियर आई कुड नॉट क्लियर मीन्स एंड दिस वन सर फिफ्थ वन वेर आई क्लियर ओके वाई एम सेंग इट सो दैट इन माई ओपिनियन आई मीन यू शुड हैव शुड हैव टेकन फाइव अटैम्प एक्चुअली डोंट सी एनी रीजन वाई यू नॉट येट देयर You're a good candidate. Definitely a very good candidate, and I don't see uh, much of a problem as far as the interview is concerned. It all depends how much, how well you have done in your mains. So that will be the thing that will be deciding here. You will only be getting some advantage. Not, uh, I mean, interview will not be something that will push you, or push you back. It's gonna, in any case, if it is, then it will uh, give you some impetus. Coming to specifics, uh, in my opinion, uh, you're a good candidate. You carry a good personality. You're uh, Uh, your uh, you, your personality is pleasant in the sense that the board member will be very eager to talk to you okay will you be wearing this sari only yes or? sir okay 
I don't have anything to say on it. Uh, by and large, it's very good. Uh, your uh, presence is, I mean, your sitting posture is good. Your, uh, it's very formal. It's very good. Voice level is very good. Flow is good. Eye contact, by and large, is very good. And uh, hand movement is, by and large, restricted. So, by and large, the communication parameter, as we call it, are there in place. I hope you realize that uh, most of the time, interview questions, uh, they are not to test your knowledge. They are generally to test other traits of your uh, personality. Going both by those tra uh, traits, uh, the creativity is there. I do see the integrity and honesty in the way you uh, uh, deliver your answers because wherever you know the answer, you deliver them. Wherever you don't know the answer, you are honest and have to uh, just uh, very clearly uh, tell that you don't know the answer, which is good. If I look at uh, uh, the things like uh, presence of mind, it's there. Knowledge, it's there. By and large, uh, there wasn't any area where you were clueless. Most of the times you knew things, except maybe uh, that at places it appears that you were too prepared for a few questions, but then this is not your fault. It is fault of the board members to They asked a question which, for which you are too prepared, but there should always be a few questions which uh, are the prepared ones. So we can understand that uh, how well prepared you are and how you deliver the prepared answers. So that part is also good. So in my opinion, I don't see anything that will uh, stop you. You uh, have to work a little bit on Delhi itself because when you categorically said that the Delhi is not my place, I, we took it but uh, there they may actually get into Delhi. Okay. Whoever uh, is coming from Delhi, they have this additional problem that uh, at least three out of board members, will, four, uh, five board members will have something to do with Delhi. So they'll have a lot of questions on Delhi. Okay. So you cannot get away with by saying that, uh, please consider Rajasthan as my uh, home state. They may actually end up having questions from Delhi, saying that, okay, you studied in Delhi, you've been in Delhi for five, six years. Tell us about Delhi. And when it's Delhi, about Delhi, it's history, culture, geography, everything, right? So prepare that also. Otherwise, Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Don't worry about uh, any question which you could not answer. Doesn't matter. But uh, now you have fairly a good idea that these are also the questions you can prepare. That's it. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.